They finally released a colorway that I actually want. It's been a long time coming, but I'm glad it's here. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler, and today I'm reviewing the brand new Adidas Easy Boost 350 V2 in the black colorway. Not only have I been waiting a long time for this colorway, I've also been waiting a long time for this exact shoe. I actually tried to order it early off GOAT so that I could have it for an early review, and uh, about two weeks after I ordered it, the seller canceled, which I didn't think was a thing that you could do. Uh, well, at least two weeks later. So, about two weeks before release, I figured if I bought a pair on StockX right then and there, I could probably have a pair just before release, so I'd still get an early review. I do hate to admit, but I paid like $250 over what the going resale rate is right now to get the shoe early. And uh, obviously, the shoe just came in today, so totally worth the money. So thank you, seller on GOAT and seller on StockX. You guys suck. But finally, now I have the shoe in hand, and yes, I'm a couple days late, but at least I have it. The 350 V2 in the all black colorway was one of those colorways that we always thought was gonna happen and just never seemed to happen. The Yeezy Boost 350 V1s had the very popular pirate black colorway, which I think out of all the 350s that have dropped is still my favorite colorway. And I guess we all just assumed that a similar colorway in an all black look would eventually come out. Little did we know it would take two years. I know I've been hating on Yeezy releases recently and that has a lot to do with the amount of pairs that are actually coming out, but the main reason I'm not a huge fan of all these releases is because most of the colorways that we get usually kind of suck. So when a colorway like this drops, one that we've been waiting for for years, even though it's simple, I still think it's a great easy release. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Starting off in the shoe, you've got a full prime knit upper that comes in the same prime knit pattern as the statics, except rather than white and gray, it comes in a very dark gray and black. Based on pictures I had seen online of this sneaker, I didn't expect it to be this gray. I really did think it was going to be a mostly black shoe. And seeing it in person, I'm not mad at that, I just kind of wish it was a little bit darker. I guess the reason they went for sort of a black and gray patterned upper is because it's very reminiscent of the pirate black colorway of the V1s. And there's some other things on this shoe which I'll mention a little bit later that also remind you of that shoe. If you couldn't already tell, this is the non-reflective version of the shoe. Two versions of the sneaker did drop, a reflective version which had 3M woven in throughout the prime knit, and this more general release version which was still pretty difficult to get that didn't have any 3M in the upper and just had 3M in the laces. I would have been fine with either colorway at retail, but I can tell you right now Right now for resale, I would not have spent an extra $600 just to have some 3M thrown in the upper. I just don't think it's worth it. Just like the statics, you've got a plastic mesh stripe running down the lateral side, but unlike the statics, it's not translucent, which means you can't actually see through it. The stripe just comes in almost a matte black and is actually darker than most of the prime knit on the upper. Moving up on the shoe, you've got your 350 V2 rope laces weaving through the prime knit upper, and as mentioned before, these rope laces actually do have 3M accents woven in. So even though this isn't technically the reflective colorway, you do still get some nice 3M shine on the laces, which in my opinion is more than enough. Moving inside the sneaker, you've got your black or dark gray sock liner that's padded around the ankle area and also has the 3M stripes on the heel. The insole of the shoe comes in black with the Adidas and Yeezy branding printed in white. The 350 V2 in the black colorway fits just like every other 350 V2. For a lot of people, that means that they should go up half a size. For me, I go true to size and take out the insole, but that's only my own personal preference. Adidas themselves on their website recommends to go up half a size, so if you're not planning to take out the insole, that's definitely what I recommend doing, but if you have the chance to try on the shoe first before you buy it, make sure to do that to make sure you're grabbing the right size for you. Then moving back on the sneaker, you find more of that gray and darker gray prime knit that really creates sort of a hypnotic pattern, at least on the medial side. Then moving around to the heel of the shoe, you've got your pull tab in black, then running through the center of the pull tab, you've got this red dashed line, which is very reminiscent of the original Pirate Blacks. Moving down on the sneaker, you've got your semi-translucent black ribbed rubber midsole, and of course, in case within that rubber, you've got your full-length boost midsole. And if you're somehow not familiar with the 350 V2's outsole at this point, it comes in rubber just like the midsole and has cut-throughs to the boost. The Yeezy Boost 350 V2 in the black colorway is by far my favorite 350 V2 in a very long time. Even though it's a simple colorway, it's one that we've been wanting for so long and I'm glad that Yeezy and Adidas finally gave it to us. And if you don't believe me that this is a colorway that people really wanted, look at the resale prices. Even right now, they're kind of crazy. But I would love to know your thoughts on the 350 V2 in the black colorway and whether you grab the pair for yourself or maybe if you grab the reflective pair. So make sure to leave those comments in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.